Hi everyone. So um, I'll just wait for another minute to see if there's any other Chris members joining, and then um, we'll start shortly. So hello everyone, um, to all the Chris members and also to the observers. So um, let's start with first um, confirming who's here. So who I see on this um, participants um, with names are Alan, Barrett, Afrinik, Andre Robachevsky, Wright, Andreas Piazza, um, Michael Abshuala, Aaron, um, Wendua Kibuba, Irani Nimpuno, Paul Randick. And of course, we have uh, Herman Belgis helping, helping us as in our secretariat. So, is there anyone else? Oh, and I'm sorry, I also see our uh, John Sweeting Aaron. So, is there anybody else who is on the call that haven't called the name and are the members of the Chris team? Nope. I don't hear from everybody. Um, so um, let's move on to confirm the agenda for today. So what I'd like to basically do is after going through the action review as um, item number two, I'd like to mainly confirm um, the comments that have been expressed so far on the IANA uh, NRO global list, as well as I'd like to hear from the Chris members if you've heard any notable um feedback from your regional list. And then um, I'd like to also um, give a brief update on the status of editorial version, which has been um, drafted by Alan, um, Michael, and myself. Um, I'd like to confirm the status of this and how can we move um, with, this, um, with this draft, editorial draft. Um, in relation to the additional work that we'll be doing to incorporate comments on um, the feedback from the community. And then I'd like to lastly, uh, with agenda item number five, um, confirm how we would like to uh, work to incorporate comments. Um, firstly, in terms of keeping like track and management of what are the feedbacks that we've been receiving in um, confirming our consideration status to make sure we haven't lost any um, important feedbacks, uh, as well as how we would um, communicate to our communities on the comments received on the global list. Um, and then I'd also like to, um, there are two additional points that I'd like to um, discuss with you, is version, con uh, version control of the latest edit as well as the common understanding about the, um, the proposal that which I sent on the CRISP mailing. So it does sound quite extensive for this uh, one hour, but do you have any comments about the agenda? No? Okay, so um, let's move on to the action review. So, um, Minutes from the last meeting, which is the fourth meeting, I do recall Herman help us start, um, draft the third um, meeting uh, minutes. Yes, uh, so my, my apology for the delay of these min uh, minutes. I will send this um, just before the, uh, the minutes of this meeting that uh, or she will be circulated in the next 24 hours. Sure. My, my apologies. Um, oh. An extra lot of work, uh, but um, no, I realize the importance of this note, so you will have it in the next 12 hours. 
Thank you very much, Herman. I totally understand. It's like we've had meetings consecutively in very short time. So um, I think as long as we do keep track of the major active action items and um, key points in the meeting, it should be all right. And just to give a brief um, summary of the last meeting for those who were not um, not at the call, um, there was a, a quite a bit of changes from the third call. So all the Chris members who were at the fourth meeting basically agreed on the direction of the revision. And um, I think we had uh, quite a bit of discussions about how we would um, address the issue of ICANN board accountability. And at the third meeting, we initially um, felt that we, sh we would propose to uh, remove the process from the global uh, policy development process, uh, the part where the ICANN board approves the, um, the global, um, sorry, let me do this again. So, um, so there's a part in the global policy development process where ICANN board makes the approval. And at the last, uh, the third, at the third call, suggestion was made to remove this uh, process from the global PDP. And then at the fourth call, at the last call, it was agreed that um, it's better to separate the issue of global uh, PDP with the direct uh, issues related to the INS art um, operations. These are separate. So let's not mix them up. And it was agreed um, by everyone who was at the last call so let's include this element of securing ICANN board accountability as a part of description is in the SLA um, document. So that's the last um, status. And um, I'd like to first stop here to see if anybody who was, um, any of the Chris members who were not at the last call um, have any questions or clarifications you would like to make. No? Okay, oh, great. And I think uh, somebody's not muted and I hear some sound, so I'd appreciate it if you could mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Thank you. And then, um, so action review um, 2B is on draft of edited version based on the order of questions by RFP. So the basic idea is um, not to change the contents of the proposal, but uh, make sure that um, we answer, uh, we, we describe the answers um, following each of the questions that are listed in each section of the RFP so that it's clear to our ICG and ultimately to the NTIA that we're clearly answering each of the questions that's listed in the RFP. Um, and so, um, Three of us, Alan, Michael, and myself, have volunteered to work on this. And um, I'd like to ask our first, um, Alan, with the um, the status. Uh, I know we've sent the draft to the mail, the Chris mailing list, but um, anything notable that you'd like to share with the team? Uh, thank you, Izumi. Um, in section uh, five, which is uh, Hold on, let me get my notes. Um, I, in section five, I added um, only one paragraph saying that we are not proposing to add any new organizations except for the review committee. And I did that to address a part of the question um, which says that the NTIA will not accept uh, adding any new government or intergovernment organization. Um, in the other section, section six, on the community um, process. Alan, th thank you. Um, yes. Can I just uh, briefly interrupt you here? Um, I wonder, um, Herman, would it be possible to show the email that um, Alan has sent on the crystal mailing list? It might take a little bit of time, but um, it might be easier for others to confirm if you were able to show that on the screen. Would that yes, be possible? working on it. Thank you very much. Sorry, Alan, to um, interrupt you. So um, please go on to um, carry on the explanation, and then maybe we can go back to the equivalent part later. So 
understood about section um, five. Okay, uh, so in section five, I thought that the existing text already fairly closely matched the order of the questions, um, but it seemed to me that one of the questions had been uh, had not really been answered, and that's the last one, which said the proposal must not replace the NTIA role with a government-led or intergovernmental organization solution. So to address that, I added a new point number seven, saying that the only new organization that's proposed is the review committee that will uh, advise and assist the NRO executive in reviewing the performance. Um, in section six on the community process, I've made several changes. Um, I, Looking at the questions, I think we should first talk about the steps that were taken and second, links to announcements and other documents, and third, an assessment of the level of consensus. So I wanted to reorganize the parts to, to follow that ordering. And um, separating the steps that have been taken from the links to documents seemed to me too difficult and not really necessary. I'm hearing an echo. Uh, Hans Petter, I think it's you. Please mute your microphone. Um, so it seemed to me that separating the steps taken from the links to documents was not really necessary. Um, so I've left them intermixed. Um, but I have added a, a part of the introduction saying that the results from the five regional processes have fed a global process. Um, and more details appear below. Then I've kept the five regional um, parts. I haven't made any changes there at all. So the Afrinic part, the Apinic part, the um, Aran part is still uh, just a placeholder. Um, the, oh, sorry. The Latinic also is just a placeholder. The right part, I have not made any changes. Oh, except I did change the headings to say instead of just right, it says right regional process. So I've done that in all five cases. Um, and then at the end, um, I've added a subheading saying global process, brackets, uh, Chris team. Um, I've kept the text unchanged. I've just added a heading. And then, um, I think that's all. Oh, and then finally, the last two or three paragraphs of my revised text um, contain words that were already in the original. I've just moved them to a different position in the document. Okay, so really, that's all that I've done. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alan. Um, it may be a little bit uh, difficult for everybody to follow if you were not able to see the actual document um, that was um, actually drafted by Alan. But um, basically, just uh, hearing from Alan's um, explanation, um, does anybody felt that there's a concern that um, we should look a little bit more into details? Or, um, of course, you can look at the draft in more details yourselves later. It doesn't mean that you have to express everything um, at this call, but um, does anybody want to make comments or questions about Alan's explanation? Nope. Hi, Zumi. Oh, okay. uh, Hi. I'm just, uh, I think Alan's explanation make uh, uh, complete sense, but indeed it, it, it's a lot of text. And um, I think it would be uh, better if we have an opportunity to review this and maybe comment on email. Of course, um, Andre, I, I totally agree, and um, that is certainly my intention as well, because um, it's not just Alan, but uh, Michael, uh, myself, and I think it's, it's a lot to observe just from this call. So um, let's just uh, fix, for example, maybe, <laughs> I don't know, 24 hours or 40, I think 24 hours maybe maximum uh, for everybody to review and uh, give uh, feedback back if that makes sense to everybody. Okay. 
So um, may I then move to, well, we're actually going to the uh, document from backwards. I just realized I should have started from myself, but uh, sorry. So can we move to uh, Michael? Sure thing, Izumi. Thank you. Um, so just really quick, uh, the intent of this wasn't to add anything new. It was to more clarify what we had already written. So um, I wasn't hoping to add anything other than just to make sure that we were responding to the specific questions um, in the RFP. In Section 3, you'll notice that I added a paragraph just because um, one of the questions in Section 3 was, you know, if, if there are any changes that we're proposing and what the implications of those changes are. Um, you'll see that one of the things they requested is that if we do have any changes that we reference the elements listed in Section 2B, which essentially, you know, our proposal is just replacing the NTIA as the contracting party with the INO functions operator with the five RIRs. So that is essentially what the, um, what the added text there was meant to convey. And then further down, um, there was just, uh, I moved one paragraph down to kind of maybe correspond with the order of the questions in the RFP. Um, but from my understanding and what, what I tried to be very specific on is that there were no implications on the interface between the INF functions and the existing policy arrangements that were in 2A. Um, and then I put in there that the, the intent for uh, having very minimal changes was for stability and con continuity in the operations. If we go down to section four, um, again, I moved one paragraph down just to, um, it's the exact same paragraph, I just moved it to more correspond with the order of the questions that, that seemed to make sense. Um, there was one question that wasn't specifically addressed in section four, and that was a necessary legal framework. So. Um, with the absence of the NTIA contract, uh, obviously we are proposing a different contract between the RARs and the IANA functions operator. So a lot of that language was essentially the same language in section three uh, describing that agreement. And then um, finally, I just uh, put in there that we were not proposing any new or technical, new technical or operational methods. However, um, I did want to mention uh, similarly as Alan did with the review committee, um, is that we proposed the review committee to be established, uh, and that's, however, that's a tool to assist the NRO, at least my understanding is, to assist the NRO in evaluating performance, and that essentially the, um, the idea of, of there being a contracting party and who is accountable um, still remained the same, because uh, the current arrangement is the NTIA is the party to whom they're accountable, then our proposal is it would be the RIRs to whom they would be accountable. But otherwise, uh, those are the changes that seemed like the language um, tracked uh, other than that. Thank you, Michael. So um, I think um, based on your um, description, what you've added um, to supplement, it, it seems uh, quite reasonable and uh, nothing controversial from um, your description. And was there any section that you felt you were not able to um, answer um, based on the current um, information, or not, um, you basically explained everything? I think, at least, I hope I was able to, to address the, the questions that were in the RFP. Um, I didn't think that there was anything that was not able to be addressed. However, I do welcome, and I look forward to hearing all the comments from everybody over the next 24 hours. Thank you, Michael. Um, any comments or question on Andre? I apologize, and that's probably because I wasn't uh, be, being able to join the last call, but the question to uh, Michael and Alan, I think those excellent changes and uh, editorial changes to the uh, response, but my question, are, are they motivated by community feedback or something else? Because right now we released first drop, we're waiting for community feedback, um, are we just running this in parallel with community or ahead of the community or just following the community incorporating their feedback? Uh, thank you, uh, Andre. Let me um, uh, answer this question. Um, the idea was that um, I felt we should do this simple editing without changing the content um, at early stage because um, if we do the editing after incorporating all community feedback, 
then people will get um, confused on whether we make change, uh, changes regarding, regarding the content and uh, incorporating community feedback, or whether this is simply editorial changes. So what I thought was, first, uh, let's work on simple editorial um, improvements. And then, um, well, this is the part that I would like to ask for your uh, feedback. Then um, post the edited version on the NRL website, clarifying that this is just the uh, editorial changes. We have not changed the content. And then um, can continue on, um, um, with the feedback that uh, we are requesting for, from the community. So this is more like um, initial version dash, dash one or something. That, that's, that was the basic idea behind it. And um, I'd be very happy to um, hear any further comments or questions about this approach. Well, thank you, Izumi. That makes a lot of sense to me. And I think it's very important that we also highlight that this doesn't introduce any changes in, in the content. It's just uh, uh, about the form. Right. Thank you. Exactly. Yes, I think that's the important part. Uh, yes, this is Alan. Um, I'd like to add to that. Uh, the motivation for these changes is to to make the wording in our response um, more easy to correlate with the wording in the RFP. So if the RFP has several points or questions in a particular order, then we wanted to make the response address the issues in the same order as much as possible. So that's the motivation. Um, as part of doing the actual editing, we did find uh, some small cases where uh, an issue had not been addressed, and we have added some wording to address that, but I think it's not a substantive change. It's, it's issues that we'd already agreed on that we just uh, neglected to mention in the text. Yes, um, thank you, Alan, for explaining this uh, much more clearly, and that's exactly the intent. And, um, if nobody has additional questions or comments, um, let's see if anybody has. Nope. Um, then I would also like to share my part of the, the same editing work that I've done, which I've covered uh, sections one and two, which are basically describing the current IANA um, service. And um, the second part is uh, related to um, policy, the, the existing um, arrangements related to policies and accountability. So uh, my approach was basically the same word, same as um, Alan and Michael. I haven't added anything new. But I must note that I did have to um, make quite a bit of changes on um, of changing the order of, um, of the paragraph. And then sometimes I had to change the um, the reply from a certain um, section to another. So that might be something that you might want to um, watch out for. But then basically the changes I made is, for example, if there are, um, if there is something that's um, uh, related to um, services that's described in the policy section, then I move to the, the, the service uh, section and vice versa. So that's, that's what I basically did. And um, I think Michael has uh, given us the, um, the red line version, but I'm happy to clarify um, which other parts that I actually uh, changed the paragraph so that everybody is able to see. Um, and um, to highlight some of the changes that I made, which may not be simply the editorial, is um, the question that's in section one, which says, which IANA service or activity is affected? And I, could, I wasn't able to find a clear answer to this question from the existing um, edit. So what I basically um, described here is that, um, well, the, there is no um, IANA services or activities related to the number of resources or resource registries directly affected by the NTIA stewardship transition. And um, so that which applies the same for the the, um, the reverse DNS as well. 
I, I'm, I'd be interested to hear if anybody has other interpretations about this. Okay, I'm not hearing from anybody. So um, I'll keep this uh, description as it is um, in the text that way. And, and another notable thing that I would like to share is um, there's a section that um, describes the, uh, see if I can, in section two, there's a section that describes um, the oversight and accountability of the parties that are involved. And um, the question is, a description of the entities or entities that provide oversight or perform accountability functions. And, and I think um, in, in the current answer, it lists ICANN and RIR. So first, um, describes about the ICANN, and the second it describes about the uh, RIR. But when I actually read the description of from the part that describes about ICANN, it seems to describe how NTIA actually conducts oversight to the ICANN. And considering this question is what entity is performing all oversight or accountability functions, it didn't make quite sense to me that ICANN is doing the oversight of its own organization. And um, it seemed uh, more make, it made more sense to me to change this ICANN word to NTIA. So uh, please be careful in taking a look in the, the revised version if this change makes sense to you, or if you think leaving the word um, in the original way, ICANN, is, is, a better, is, is a better describing this, um, this section. So those are the highlights that I have from my part. And um, I think Michael has um, circulated the red line, red line version on the mailing list. Um, and I'm happy to um, provide additional explanations on the mailing list for um, when we're doing the review. So um, I see the hand up from um, Alan. Uh, Andre, I assume that's an old hand, so I'd like to go to Alan. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Izumi. Um, in section one, it says, it asks uh, what registries are involved in providing uh, the service. Um, and I think the, the response we're looking for there is that it's the, the IANA registries for IPv4, IPv6, and AS numbers. I think those are, are the registries that they're looking for in the answer. Um, your text mentions the RIRs rather than the IANA registries. Thank you very much, Alan, for pointing that out. Um, yes, um, I think that would make sense. And uh, let me also check with the answer from the IETF. That was actually the part that I thought a little bit um, ambiguous. That your, your comment reminded me. And I just simply try to leave the current text which describes about the RIR. So thank you. I'll take a look at that and um, see um, how we, I can revise. So any other comments? Sure. If not, then um, let's move to another um, agenda item. So to clarify, the next step for this is that uh, let's give 24 hours window after this call. I, I understand it's already holiday season, but um, for everybody to comment and Sure, I understand, Ellen. You haven't had time to review in detail. Yes, I understand. So let's just give 24 hours window after this call. So until um, UTC 14 um, on 23rd of December, for everybody to um, give feedback online, and then if um, and then incorporate them uh, within the next. Um, Well, um, 
I would hope maybe 12 hours afterwards. That might sound a little bit aggressive. So I'd like to hear uh, additional feedback. But, and then post the updated, the uh, edited version on the on the website, clarifying there are no um, changes in terms of content, simply editorial changes. How does that sound, especially for the 12 hours uh, editing window for um, Alan? And Michael and also myself, that sounds a bit tough, but um, uh, how do you feel about that? So, if um, no concerns, oh, yes, Alan, please. Oh, I just wanted to say I should be fine to edit within those deadlines. Thank you, Alan. So, uh, let's work on that. So, um, to conclude, that means um, hmm. so we'll give 24 hours for everybody to review and additional 12 hours to incorporate feedback. So let's go move on to um, yeah. Thank you, Michael, as well for comment. Yep. So um, I encourage um, people to give in on comments early, and um, and then if there are small comments, it should be. So let's move on to our agenda item number three, um, confirming comments so far expressed on the global mailing list and uh, from the regional list. So um, I had actually initially hoped to summarize, um, give a summary of all the comments made on the global list and uh, so that we, we would be able to have a look. But unfortunately, um, um, well, myself, um, I was too. I didn't have enough time to do this, and um, I, I didn't have time to call for the volunteer for this. So um, let's just uh, pick up the notable comments that you observe from the mailing list, which needs our uh, discussions here instead of just being able to resolve on the on the um, on the mailing list. And then um, move on to rather than finding perhaps immediate answer to answers to all of them, we can consider how we can um, um, work on incorporating comments. So um, just to start, I did observe a couple of uh, questions, same questions um, raised from the Chris team on why why is um, some comments trying to um, address intellectual property? I think that was that seemed to be a common concern that has been um, expressed, and that might not be such a difficult question to um, reply back, actually. Um, and um, let's hear if anyone else um, would like to raise a, a, a comment that was raised on the global list that you would like to discuss here with the other members of the team. Hi, Zumi. This is Andre again. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think you captured this uh, um, uh, correctly. The main points were about intellectual property rights, and that's not surprising. I think we had the same discussion on the ITF when discussing the ITF proposal. The uh, intellectual property rights uh, uh, with regards to the content of the registries, the databases, and uh, the trademarks, and in Specifically, the IANA.org, uh, the IANA trademark and IANA.org domain were discussed in the ITF. I think those are important issues. Also, take into account that um, I think NTIA in its current kind of contract uh, has special provisions for that. And in fact, uh, I think uh, that NTIA holds the uh, rights, uh, intellectual property rights, uh, not the contractor itself. Um, also, I think it's very important that we ensure in our SLAs that uh, intellectual property rights are not remaining with ICANN, but with whatever, or, well, that can be transferred, let me put it that way, if we decide to uh, go for another IANA operator. I think the, some of the issues might be more difficult than they seem, um, and uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't, know, don't, don't I cannot specify a, a particular language to resolve those issues. I just wanted to know that in the ITF content, uh, the outcome of those discussions was not to put very precise language that we cannot retract later 
but rather put a stick in the ground and say, hey, those are issues, identify issues in our response and the desirable outcome, and then let the contractual team, the well, in, in, in the case of the ITF, it's OC, to negotiate specific terms. So that's just my input, thank you. Thank you very much, Andre. Um, it, it sounds like a, the IETF um, approach does sound like a reasonable start. So um, we don't have to make a conclusion at this call, but um, if you don't mind, Andre, would you be able to like briefly summarize this so that the people who are not at the call um, can also see on the mailing list, and then we can finally confirm whether everybody is ha happy with this uh, this general policy or direction that we we, we um, actually describe, we recognize this issue being discussed, and then this will be addressed in detail in the, in the, um, the agreement that we will be um, uh, final, finalizing at the time of the transition. Yes, absolutely. I can, I can provide some of the text from the ITF response and some of the context of discussions, if that would be helpful. Thank you, and I see Alan hand up. And I'll also later read a comment from Michael if that's something that um, I, I, I should read. Okay, uh, thank you, Izumi. Um, yes, just a personal comment. I think it's important that any trademarks and rights to databases and intellectual property and such should be uh, tied to the IANA function rather than to ICANN. And uh, so I I think I support uh, what Andre said about um, calling that out and leaving it up to, to the legal staff negotiating the contracts to figure out the details. Thank you very much, Alan. And I see Michael's comment um, is basically supporting this direction, if I interpret this so correctly. So, um, and um, are there any other comments that you observe that we should discuss at this call at this moment? I, was, I see a lot of co uh, comments and uh, questions uh, received from um, who, and I'm not sure we're able to cover all of the questions that have been raised from him. So uh, what I would like to propose is, um, as the next step, I, I do actually like to have like a, a brief um, capturing of each of the, maybe not every single question, but categorize issues, and then what are the, the the essence of the comments, and then how we want to address it. Maybe like in an Excel sheet or something, so that we, we keep track of what's happening, and then maybe also have a, a thread to discuss how we would uh, address uh, the comments being received uh, issue by issue. Does this uh, approach sound reasonable? Okay, um, thank you. So I see support from Nurani, Andre, and uh, anybody else have any comments? No, and then actually... Just one little comment. Uh, Izumi, I also think it's very important uh, what, what you just suggested because that's the way we can actually communicate the changes we're introducing in the new version of the proposal. If we partition this by specific issues, I think it would be much easier for us also to communicate to the community back. Oh, thank you, Andre. So um, I didn't quite catch what you meant about a uh, specific issue. So instead of just broadly saying um, like an uh, issue about this, be as specific as possible. Was that your uh, point? If Yes, well, I think the next version uh, that we are going to release after the community feedback, uh, I think we need to communicate this along with some highlights of the changes that we introduced. And the issues that we collected and addressed, I think would be, uh, this summary would be very helpful to the community, given the timeline we are working on. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Andre. That was exactly my point. And I actually wanted to uh, um, ask for your feedback, like um, whether you feel comfortable to um, basically uh, to disclose the status. So these are the issues that we actually recognize that we received and then um, see that whether to our status this is actually uh, not yet being addressed or under consideration, so this is uh, already considered or something like that. So our community is no, no, can um, see 
this, um, whether their um, comments are being addressed. So if um, no concerns expressed about this approach, then what I'd like to do is um, actually it's very hard for um, um, for myself to uh, do this uh, keeping track of um, Excel sheet and then also driving the meeting itself. So it would be very helpful if anybody would be able to volunteer for this. You don't have to include your own judgment. You simply have to keep record of what's being posted, which still uh, might be a lot of work. And I wonder if anybody is able to volunteer for this. I can volunteer. This is John. You, you would like a spreadsheet just kept for the issues that are raised on the mailing list, correct? That's exactly the idea. Thank you so much, John. It's very, very helpful. I know this is like quite uh, uh, a lot of um, work that needs patience sometimes, maybe. But um, yes, that's the basic idea. So just a spreadsheet of the type of comment, who commented, when, and then uh, the status within the question. That's, that's the idea. Thank you very much. I, I can work with John Sweating in volunteering for the same. Oh, thank you so much, Mwangjua, as well. It's great. So uh, maybe you can help each other and figure out what would be the best uh, uh, way to, um, to keep track. Thank you very much. And then um, I'd like to, well, we actually have um, almost 20 minutes left. So I would love to hear if there are any notable feedback from our regional list briefly, and then move on to the last agenda item. There is no feedback from the AFRINIC list. Noted. So, um, anything on the errand? Uh, no, this is John. No, there's uh, all that's really been on there is my post forwarding, uh, you know, our in information for our meetings and agendas and stuff. Thank you. I've noticed you've been uh, posting a lot of the information from Chris. Uh, thank you, John. And uh, from APNIC, again, it's the same. No uh, comments on our mailing list. And actually, I'd like to share that um, our team, the, the APNIC region team, um, so that's including myself, putting on the APNIC hat, we're considering to set up a, a web, web, um, WebEx uh, meeting for our community uh, sometime within um, this year, within December, so that the community can uh, uh, make comments or questions uh, if they don't feel comfortable on the mailing list. That's the current idea that we have. We're going to discuss more details uh, tomorrow. So it's not a fix, but just sharing this idea for your information. And then, um, any anything in the last version? Um, any notable comments? Yes. Nobody is uh, commenting from LACNIC, then um, let's move to Ripe. Yes, Suzuni. Well, there is no feedback. One thing that we encourage our community members to use IANA transfer to actually comment on the proposal. I don't think that kind of, you know, active Ripe community members are participating now, but we are trying to encourage them. So we send all the information to the uh, Corporation Working Group mailing list and encourage feedback on the IANA transfer. Excellent. Thank you very much. I also saw the announcement uh, on the right as well. So um, <laughs> um, let's uh, move on to the last agenda item. Um, so I think I actually covered 5A, so keeping records of um, issues in our consideration status. And um, well, um, the section B, 5B is, yes, I was just, um, I actually wanted to ask whether you think it's appropriate for us to um, give feedback on the comments, um, each of the comments that's been posted. Uh, I think 
a few people have actually made a couple of comments and we're keeping quiet at this stage except for asking questions. But um, <laughs> my suggestion is if we have any clarification questions, any of the Chris team members are, uh, are welcome to express you know, and ask questions that helps um, us in clarifying. And then um, until we have a clear policy on how we would address to address these issues about questions being raised, I think it's um, rather than giving out to confusing replies from different Chris members, it's better to have a, a consolidated reply um, after confirmation within the team on how we would uh, reply if it's considered necessary. How, how do you think about this approach? Uh, things no comment. So um, I will, uh, for, for the moment, I, people on the list may be wondering why they're not hearing anything from us. So I'll just clarify that we will work in this way uh, on the list, and then uh, we'll just uh, keep uh, looking at the comments. So, um, so Agenda 5B is covered. And then um, the next uh, agenda, Agenda 5C, version control and avoiding confusion with the community. The reason I would like to raise this is there has been a couple of um, draft proposals being posted as a part of the meeting material. So they're not our initial draft, but the ones even before this. But if somebody happens to just click on the link of the old um, version, it doesn't really say this is an old version or anything. So people might get confused which version is the latest version. So my personal suggestion and preference is any of the old versions that's being posted up on the on the meeting are uh, as a ref reference material to the meeting. I want to clearly say this is old version, so that people just uh, happen to only click the link, uh, doesn't get confused and think that the old version is the latest version. Um, does this uh, proposal make sense to um, everybody? Um, Nirani. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that I totally support that. I think that is uh, very important uh, when communicating with the community. So I think your approach makes perfect sense. Thank you. Thank you, Nirani, for this uh, supportive um, comment. So if that's um, being also a hand, Alan, please. Uh, yes, I, I definitely support making it clear to the community which drafts are uh, outputs from the group, which drafts are purely internal um, documents, and what's current and what's out of date. And um, I'd suggest uh, possibly reorganizing the Chris team's web page to have separate sections for each category. So a section, you know, currently we've got everything organized by dates of meetings, but we could have another section for um, documents that that are outputs from the group, as opposed to the meeting where those documents are inputs to the meeting. Uh, yes. So if I understand it correctly, um, Alan, make it clear whether these are meeting materials or uh, a material that we clearly want to uh, share as, uh, as as a way of like either for information or as as reference for uh, as a as a way of receiving feedback. So that's how I understood uh, your comments, Alan. So make a clear distinction between meeting reference material and the actual uh, public um, proper material for the community to take a look. So, um, and I think um, Andre has um, made an excellent suggestion. We should also include the version number in the title. That makes a lot of sense. I see support from uh, Paul Randick on this, on Nurani as well. And um, so let's uh, move with this approach. So um, would uh, Heman, uh, would you be able to help us on this? So firstly, clarify, which is the um, version that was um, internal before the actual publication of the initial draft. And then keep version number per proposal. And also, 
separate um, on the web page. The materials, the materials for meeting, and then materials that we clearly want the, you know, the, the community to see as an official public document. Um, would you be able to help with that, Hannah? Of course. <clears throat> no worries. Thank you very much. I, I do uh, realize that we're putting a lot of work on you, Haman, with minutes and uh, changes to the website. And um, I really appreciate a lot of work that you're doing for us, um, especially during the holiday season. Thank no you. No problem. That's, that's good. No, no, no problem. Thank you. And um, thank you, Andre, for sharing the link uh, for how it looks on IETF. Um, Okay. Um, uh, sorry, so me, yeah. um, I just made a very quick changes just to help right now with the issue of uh, confusion. Mm -hmm. I will implement the changes that you uh, discussed here, but if you want to take a look right now, what is the, in the uh, uh, Chris team uh, page, it's just a temporary um, uh, change, which is some strike out the version of the of, of uh, uh, the links of the, to the oldest version. I make a put a note that are outdated, but uh, that's just for now. I just made it in the, during the middle of the discussions uh, before you, you end up with, uh, with the uh, specific suggestions. Um, but I will implement those, but just, just want to know that I made something for now. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I, I saw it and I think um, it's very easy to see. So um, I do um, reckon, note that you you will be making additional changes. So this is just like a, the front page and then you'll be adding um, a description inside the actual document as well, as well as some um, um, keeping the version number, which uh, maybe perhaps we can refer to IETF or what IETF does. Um, as a reference as well. So um, thank you, Herman, for this and for working on this uh, immediately. It looks so uh, really uh, easy to find what, what is outdated. So I think it's helpful. So um, and also I read um, <coughs> a comment from LACMIC saying that there's no uh, comments at the LACMIC region either. So thank you, Andre, for sharing this. So the last uh, point on the agenda is uh, to make sure that we have a common understanding about um, what's being proposed. And um, this is something that I actually posted on the mailing list on the two elements of the proposals that's being posted. Um, that's regarding the, the agreement, uh, which is placed on SLA, and another point is uh, related to the review committee. Um, I've received feedback so far from um, an Andres from LACNIC and also um, one Dua from AFANIC that uh, they're happy with um, what's being described. But um, please do let me know if you have any clarifications, questions about the understand um, what's being described um, to make sure it, it's quite important that we do share a common understanding as a Christian team, especially when we're going back to our community to explain. So, um, um, so I think that's, um, do, do, does anybody have any comments about um, the, the last point, common understanding? Um, I uh, yes. Uh, this is Mwendoa. Uh, there is that common understanding that we shared on the CRISP list. If the CRISP list, we, are, we already opened it, and all the other communities can be able to see the content on it. So I don't see any issue why we cannot share content on that list with our respective communities. Oh, sure, I understand. So that was related to your comment earlier, whether you would, you could uh, share this common understanding I shared on the crest list with the Afronic region, yes. right? Um, yes. Yes, that, that's a fair point, I understand. Um, and the, the only reason I wanted to uh, hold was I didn't get feedback from all the CRISP team members whether they're comfortable with this common understanding. 
So I thought it's a little bit premature at this uh, stage before this call to say this is actually the common understanding by the CRISP team. So maybe perhaps we can give um, another 24-hour window for to make sure people who are not at the call have time to uh, give feedback to this um, common understanding description that I sent. And then if there's no concerns or uh, clarifications um, expressed on the list, then uh, but, uh, I'm happy for you to share this on the Afrinix list. Um, OK, thank that you. that sound OK? Yeah? Thank you. Okay. It's OK. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for raising this question. I think it's important. And I, I, it's great that you actually spoke. Oh, Alan. Uh, thanks, Izumi. Um, I think there have been a few changes since you sent that common understanding document on uh, the 18th of December. Um, for example, in your document, you talk about removing the role of the ICANN board in ratifying policy, and uh, we're no longer doing that. There might also be other things that are out of date. I haven't checked it in detail. Thank you very much, Alan, for pointing that out. And I will um, uh, double check, and then so I will clearly list call for comment within 24 hours on the first team mailing list, and then I'll double check to make sure it's uh, it's actually an updated version. Thank you for this, um, Alan. Um, so um, I think I'm. Hearing some noise, but um, would somebody able to mute on um, this? It sounds somebody? better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Um. So, does anybody um have any comments um or anything that you would like to discuss at the call today? Okay, so I think we did do quite well within one hour um, covering this extensive um, um, agenda. And so we do have our meeting scheduled on the 30th. The next meeting is scheduled on the 30th, which is a little bit ahead, but some. Um, no, I, I well I understand uh, most people are likely to be on holidays. I'm not sure if you want to have a meeting that much ahead. Um oh, but let's look if um we can forward it at least for one day on the twenty ninth. Um so I don't know how much one this one day would make a difference, but um, let's uh, let's um, plan a meeting on the 29th, Monday the 29th. If nobody has any comments uh, about changing the uh, meeting date from the 30th to 29th, then let's have a meeting on the same time, 13 um, o'clock UTC be on Monday the 29th of December. Okay, so I'm not hearing any comments about this. So um, thank you so much for um, attending the call this time and uh, I'm happy to see where we're making good progress. And I suppose I won't be hearing you until Christmas. So uh, Merry Christmas for those of you who would be celebrating the Christmas. And uh, have a nice day. You have a nice evening. Thanks, everyone. So I'm closing Thanks. the meeting. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Zumi. Thank you, the team. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you.